ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe Bob Grimes, head of security up here at Speak to Grapho, and I'm sitting here in the booth with Trixie, and I'd like to extend a special welcome to any atheist or theist callers or anybody on the spectrum. And uh, without further ado, Mr. Grapho. Well, thank you, Joe Bob Grimes. We're in the studio here. We're taking up a, uh, a different time slot. And uh, like Joe Bob said, he's here. Trixie's in the booth, along with Joe Bob. And I'm Grapho. I'm here to take your calls and uh, shoot the bull with you and uh, do a little scribbling, too. We got uh, a couple people in the live studio audience. Woo! Yep, there they are. All right, Grapho, we got callers already. You ready? Yeah, Trix, put them through. All right, I'm putting on line four. All righty. Welcome, caller. You're on the air. Hello? Hey, dude. Uh, well, I'm in high school, and I've been watching your show for the past, like, four days. Yeah. And I went on, like, a binge of just watching your stuff for two days straight. And uh, you've really opened my mind uh, and to becoming an atheist. Uh, because I like to back up everything I have with Evan. Hey. Um, and uh, for the past, sorry, uh, for the past uh, few days, I've been arguing with my dad slash debating about uh, whether God exists or not. And I've boiled him down this one last argument that I can't seem to break, and I was wondering if you guys could help. Well, that's a tough problem. I mean, uh, you're arguing with your dad, and he's usually always right, right? Uh, yeah, but... He understands the evidence for it, so. Um, yeah, that's a tough one. I would, uh, yeah, so you're on the verge of becoming an atheist, or you already are an atheist? I'm atheist, but I'm, I haven't admitted it to him yet. Okay, because he's going to take his belt off when you tell him that, right? No, he won't be very mad, he understands. He already said if I wanted to, I could. Well, uh, sure. Because he doesn't mind, like, what I think. Yeah, there's nothing he can do to stop you from thinking what you think anyhow. I mean, yeah. he should, uh, he probably understands that you're, uh, you're your own person. You're just now coming online. You're, you're, you're breaking away from all these things that people have taught you. Um, and now you're pretty much sold on the whole atheist deal, right? Um, well, yeah, basically. Have you just... Um, well, my question uh, that he always claims is that he claims that um, no one would die and endure the Roman torture if they didn't truly believe what they saw, which was Jesus resurrected. Say that one more time. I'm a little thrown by that. Um, he claims that no one would endure the Roman torture if they didn't really see Jesus resurrect from the dead. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with your dad on that one. That's a tough really? one. Yeah, man, yeah. Now, I have to tell you something. You're, you're not calling the atheist show today. You're not watching, are you? You got me on, on the telephone, right? Oh, yeah, just on the telephone. Well, that's cool. We welcome all atheists to our little show. But what you've got here is a television show called Speak to Grapho. But, um, but you know we're welcoming the atheist callers to the Absolutely. Grapho. Yeah. Now, Trix, what do you think about his particular conundrum? Well, he I'm maybe Joe. Can Joe? I jump in? Can I jump in here yeah. for a second, boss? Yeah, buddy. Well, now, I, I, you know, whichever way you choose to go, I, I got to say that uh, the the Christians who were going to the lines didn't see Jesus rise from the dead. They were coming uh, at least a generation after that, at the very least. That's a good point, my friend. Did you catch that, buddy? Yeah, I did. Uh, but that doesn't um, that doesn't uh, discount what his dad was saying, though, does it, Joe Bob? Well, I think that uh, you'll find. Uh, probably in, in any part of the world uh, worshiping one or multiple deities or you know worshiping the spirit of nature or even people who are just uh, trying to protect their property will be willing to go to the lions or whatever fate 
I don't think it proves there's a god, although I, I happen to know for sure that there is one. There you go. Whoa. Now, caller, what do you think of that? Is he still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah, that's a lot to take in, isn't it? And so, uh, you're in high school, you've been watching a bunch of these shows. Yeah. And you were on the verge of declaring for atheism. That's that's louder than y'all's voices, by the way, sweetie. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to uh, make my points before I come out about being an atheist. Right, yeah, you gotta get your ducks in a row before you make that big step. That's a pretty big step. Actually, it's as big as saying, I believe, isn't it? Yeah. So, I don't know, man. You got well, thank you. Thank you, my friend. Call back anytime. Yep. All right. Yep, goodbye. Goodbye. What do you think of that, Trex? I'm still working things out here in the booth. You ready for our next one? Sure, put them through. Welcome, caller. You're on the air. Speak to me, caller. Hmm, maybe we lost them. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, dude. What's going on? Oh, nothing much. How you doing? I'm doing swell. And yourself? I'm doing good. Uh, it's hard to hear you over the music in the yeah, background. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that music's it. a little... There we go. Is that better now? Silence, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I was under the impression I was calling the atheist experience. Well, that's well. okay. You got, uh, a, you got a question for me? For I am Grapho. Brian Grapho? No, I am Grapho. Our host today is Grapho. And oh, Grapho. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what what show is this? This is uh, Grapho. Speak to Grapho. That's the okay, name I'm of the not, show. I, I've never heard a show, so I'm a little confused. But That's okay, dude. What's your show about? It's a call-in show, and you're calling in, and I'm actually drawing a picture on television while you're doing that. I'm not getting anything on the screen. We're at channel 16, uh, channelaustin.org. I'm actually on Ustream. Yeah, they're not they're not showing on Ustream today. Okay. So yeah. click on the, um, the, the right, well, Channel I'm, Austin link. I'll tell you what, man. Go to uh, 16. I'm actually drawing your portrait right now. If You're you, drawing my portrait? I am. How I can am. you draw my portrait if you can't see me? Well, I just got a good idea. I can tell by the construct of your voice what your what your skull looks like, and I just put uh, skin around it, and I'm done. Really? Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, man. A little I bit find, of reverse I phrenology. I believe, but it's uh, it's Joe Bob calls it reverse phrenology. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you're on what channel? Streaming 16 on uh, channelaustin.org. So, caller, did you have a topic you wanted to discuss well, today? I'm actually an atheist. Uh, I, I, I uh. I was raised in a Catholic church my whole life. I was an altar boy, so I uh, I served the church church for many years. And so, uh, do you think being an altar boy had a, a negative impact on your belief system now? Do I think being an altar boy had a negative impact on my belief system now? No. Yeah. No, I don't think it had a negative impact. No. But did it? I, th I think maybe what he's asking is, did it have maybe have an effect on you becoming an atheist? No, it did not have an effect on me becoming an atheist at okay. all. Um, what had an effect on me becoming an atheist uh, were the experiences in my life. And uh, I was in the Marines for six years. Wow. So I, I traveled around the world and I met people of di many different cultures and from what I could see is that most people in any region of the world tend to be whatever religion dominates that region. Makes sense. So just using simple deduction, I mean, I was born into a Christian, mostly Christian nation and uh, region. So, you know, why, you know, that's, what I saw as being the only reason why I was a Christian or Catholic uh, is that, you know. Well, you know, in this country you have uh, the ability, much easier than other countries, to switch religions or whatever, or not believe in anything. Um, so, where the hell was I going with that? 
Yeah. Hello? Hello, we're here. <laughs> yeah, man, we're here. Uh, I got hung up on my, my drawing of you. Oh, oh, it's okay, yeah. man. Yeah, Go yeah. Ahead. Right on. So, um, you know, uh, Egypt is 10% Christian. Yeah, I, I understand that. There are uh, small sects of, of different uh, religions in all, in all areas. Right, right. Uh, so, I, I can't we can't go by just saying that everybody in the Middle East is Islam because we know that's not true. No, oh, but it sure is hard on the people that aren't Islamic, isn't it? I'm sorry? It's hard on those that are not Islamic. Yes, it in is. In the Middle East, yeah. Where did you serve, anyhow? Where did I serve? Yeah. Well, I was mainly stationed in uh, the States, but I, I got to go on a ship in 98, and we stopped in many different places so I, I was uh in turkey uh, uh spain uh, uh trying to think some of the places well, that's cool. africa you know so i've been to quite a couple of different continents and i noticed that there's a lot of different religions around the world and that was kind of my first eye-opening experience that wow there's more than just christianity hey, right can I, can I jump in here for a second yeah would you please okay so, you know, so there's more than Christianity, but, you know, do these other, you know, beliefs or whatever they are, do they stack up? I mean, how do they stack up to, to Christianity? Uh, just as well. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Well, so, did you explore? I'm sorry, was somebody saying something? You no, know, go ahead, go ahead, man. Okay, Christianity, where does Christianity come from? The Middle East? Judea? I'm sorry? Judea? Judea, okay, but they all go back to the Abrahamic religion. Right. That's. Right. I mean, even even in Islam, they believe Jesus Christ was one of the uh, uh, what do you call it? Pro Prophets. Prophet. They believe he was a prophet. And his mother was a virgin, and all that too. Right. I, I mean, if you're going to go off of that, you can go about six thousand years back to uh, Horus, the sun god, in Egypt. Uh, they all, he, he was born of a virgin, uh, he, I don't know if he was, I can't remember if he was crucified, but he rose, you know, rose from the dead, he healed the sick, you know. Horace did? Yes, sir. Far out, man. Born December 25th. Well, that's a coincidence. Yeah, but that's, he came before Christ. Oh, I see. Yeah, we are talking 6,000 years ago. Wow. Yeah, and, and he's not the only one. There are probably around, now don't quote me, but there's probably around another hundred gods who subscribe to the same uh, attributes. Attributes, yeah. there you go. Right. Well, I mean, so that's kind of, I, I like the sound of that, so it goes all the way back to Egypt then. That sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, it does. Well, I mean, so that's a bad thing or a good thing? Well, I'm just saying, I mean, how can all these, how can, if, if you're on the side of Christianity, how can you say all these are fake and ours is the real one? Oh, I wouldn't say that at all. It just sounds like it's the, you know, the latest and the, and the biggest and the baddest. Right. It is. It is. Just the, he is just the latest, but he's not a, actually because there's people right now who claim they're Jesus Christ or the second coming. But but how many billions of followers they got? Well, they don't have m many because anyone who would claim the things that were claimed, f you know, 1,400 years ago, now we would call them crazy. Okay, how many how many Sistine chapels they got? Oh, how many Sistine chapels did they have? Yeah, you know, you say, oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know the pyramids and Horus and all that. I'm, I can see where you're going with that. There's one Sistine chapel. That's what I'm talking about. But what, what, I don't understand what you're getting at. Yeah, what's your point, Joe Bob? Make it succinctly. Well, you know, I don't know. You hear about what happened though, the f first time they went up there on the moon? When the Amer when Americans did, or are you talking about Russia? Uh, uh, Russia never put no people on the moon. Yeah, they did. They were the first ones to put somebody on the moon. No, oh, no, 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 oh, no, 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 no. Well, they had Sputnik. They weren't the first on the moon. You're right. right. They were but the first they, in space. They were the first in space. I'm they were the first in space. You're right. You're right. And yeah, and uh, but Russia is a culture is coming from the uh, Christian Orthodox tradition. Yeah. And yeah. So, 
But, well, yeah, well, so, you know, when they finally got up there on the moon, you know, what's the first thing they did when they sat down? When they sat down? You yeah. mean as far as what was what did, what did, uh, what's his name say? Well, no, I'm not talking about what they said. I'm talking about what they did. One giant step for mankind. Yeah, who was it? But Light Buzzier? What was it? Yeah, <laughs> Light, Light Buzzier. <laughs> well, <laughs> what I'm talking about is, okay, so there was Armstrong, and he's, you know, but before they got out and started walking yeah, around, yeah, what'd they do? Louis Armstrong, there you go. Yeah, Louis Armstrong. Louis. What was his name? Louis. Louis Armstrong. Yeah, okay. right. I, I don't know about that, boss. Oh, am I wrong? I don't think he oh, his brother, the trumpet. His so. brother Neil. Yeah, right, cool. right. They must have had different, uh, they must have been half brothers. Yeah, Neil Armstrong. <laughs> Neil Armstrong. That's right. Okay, but where, where, are, you, where are you going? I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude, but where are you going with this? There's one Sistine Chapel and then. The one Sistine Chapel? Well, I was going to say something else. Well, I was going to say, what the first thing they did when they got up there on the moon was to sit down, they had themselves some communion, blood and wine. Did they really? Body and bread, that's right. Okay, but what, is, what does that prove, man? I mean, I could, I could go out and do something great and then claim to drink the blood of my God and eat his body. That's a good point, caller. Isn't, isn't that, I mean, isn't that kind of sick to think about? Which one? Transubstantiation is what he's talking about. That you're drinking the blood of your supposed God. And kind of cannibalistic, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can see, you know, drinking the blood of a person or even an animal, but a God? <laughs> a God, yeah. I, I think I might have to try that. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one sweet brew. I mean, yeah, I've, eat, I've eaten the crouton of Christ a couple of times, you know. <laughs> well, you must have. You helped, pre and, you helped prepare the whole uh, yeah, sacrifice. I, I, I mean, I actually got in trouble because me and, me and another buddy of mine, we used to go drink the wine, you know, before, before it got blessed. You, well, yeah, before it was consecrated, sure. You Marines, man. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, uh, what, what, what do you guys think about atheists? Do you think we're bad? I don't. Really? I don't think you're good, but I don't think you're bad either. Why don't you think we're good? Well, I, I'm pretty neutral on the, on the subject, really. No, you said you don't think we're good. That's not being neutral. No, no, I don't think you're bad either. Okay, so you're just neutral. Yeah, you I'm neutral, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, free country, you can do whatever you want to. Right, I know. I'm yeah. off of this, right? Exactly. Um, so, in your opinion, who is worse? Somebody who worships any god or an atheist? Or are you, are you neutral across the board? I'm pretty neutral across the board. Maybe. That's pretty heavy. Joe Bob Briggs is the guy, excuse me, Joe Bob Grimes, is the <laughs> fellow you're talking to. Joe Bob, how do you feel about that? Well, I'll tell you what. Now, if it's something that you you know something you're trying to figure out on your own, and you're having to go up against your your family and your friends and everything, that that can that can take a lot of courage. So uh, yeah, I've, I've been ostracized by most of my family. Well, yeah, no, that that I, mean, I think that builds character for your belief. Yes. No I'm kidding. Belief. And and what part of the country are you in, sir? I'm in the deep south. Deep, deep south. That Mississippi. means Mississippi. Okay. I call it Mississippi. Oh wow! <laughs> but you're proud of your state, aren't you? This is not my state. Oh, okay. I just have the unfortunate uh, circumstance of living here. I see. I see. Well, where are you from originally? I'm from New Orleans. Oh, okay. Which is totally different than uh, Louisiana. Yeah, that's for sure. Sounds like the deep south to me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. on. But, uh, you know, I just, uh, you know, I want your listeners to know that atheists aren't bad people. No? No, I volunteer with, uh, with all kinds of charities. I donate to charities. I donate my time to uh, animal shelters. Those aren't really religious issues, though, are they? They're not religious issues, no. but I, I just want your, I want your viewers or your listeners to know that Atheists are good people, and that that word atheist has a, a real bad stigma attached to it. Hmm. Well, you know, uh, I guess you may be right. Uh, are you really an atheist, or are you really more of an agnostic? No, I'm. I'm. I call myself a militant atheist. Wow, we. A militant atheist. Yeah. Not, not that I'm violent. No. Not, not violent at all. I'm just. 
I, I, I seem to remember, weren't there some militant atheists over there in uh, Russia and China and those places? Say what now? I, say, I, I seem to recall some militant atheists over in uh, Russia and China. That's what I think of when I hear militant atheists. Uh, well, I, I don't want to be uh, compared are you, to Stalin. Are you a communist? Am I a communist? Yeah. No, that's another okay. word that's okay. been uh, kind of misused as well. Uh, well what, what I'm saying what, is, what's, so... What's the, what's the root word in communist? Community. What's mm -hmm. wrong with helping your fellow man? Oh, nothing at all. Nothing. So you that's the key word in communism. But when you take communism and you... Most communism is not... What people call communism is not communism. That is dictatorship. But people say that's communism. That's not communism. Communism is people living in a community and helping each other out. If I got something, it's yours. And vice versa. Uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And yeah. I, that's not a world I my would My stuff is mine, with. though. I'm sorry? My stuff is mine. Well, we're taking issues yeah, that's how most that's Christian Republicans are. I got mine. Uh, Screw you, buddy. That's real Christian, by the way. I just said it's mine. My stuff is mine. Yeah, your, st your stuff is yours. Yeah. But you know what? If, if you got enough and, and your neighbor needs some, you wouldn't give him some? Uh, maybe I would. Maybe I wouldn't. Well, that's real Christian of you. Well, what, what makes you think? You need to read the Bible because apparently you don't even know what your own God uh, you sure are making a lot of uh, suppositions about me, man. Well, I mean, you're like, well, well what's mine is mine. Would I, Jesus say that? Well, I'm not going to put any words in Jesus' mouth. Uh, I will. It, it's yeah. kind of hard to put a word in a fake person's mouth. Whoa. <laughs> 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 I mean, think about it. God sends his only begotten son... Uh, which he got through a virgin. Uh, how could you? How did he do that? Well, he already well, had. He, he already out. had a son. What's that now? He already had a son. He already had a son. Yeah. So Jesus is not God's only begotten son. No, no, I'm saying Jesus already existed before he was incarnated on the earth. Jesus already existed. That's right. The third person of the Trinity. And he was born, but he was still born of a virgin, the Virgin Mary. Right. Okay, so you don't think that maybe Mary was uh, fooling around and had to explain uh, blasphemy. how she got pregnant? I, maybe? Well, I hear you. I hear what you're saying, but no, I don't think so. Really? No. Nah. You just don't think so, so. So I just don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys, man. Yeah, man. Your, your reasoning is is just first class. Yeah, okay. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you don't always want to rely on reasoning. Sometimes you got to go with gut instinct. You gotta, yeah, sometimes you just got to go on gut instinct. That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, there are some cases where you do need to follow your gut. There you go. Yeah. But spending your whole life worshiping something that's probably not there, that's not a situation you should go on a gut instinct with. Well, when you, you put know? it like that. Well, it's, a, it's a very personal thing, don't you think? Yeah, I think it is a personal thing, but come on, man. Yeah, point well taken. Point well um, taken, my friend. But what I was trying to say is why would he send, first off, he sent his son to stop the sins or to die for the sins of man. If he, if God knows everything, because he's omnipotent, um, wouldn't he know that man was going to sin? But we still had to go through it. What? Why? Why do he have to go through all that? That's a good question. Joe Bob, would you handle that? Well, I, I think that uh, for some reason we had to go through it. We all did. You know, you can, you can look at your child and you can know that your child's going to have to learn some tough lessons, and you can know. You can already have the information that he's got to get and the lesson that he's got to learn yourself. You How could, you folks doing? But uh, he's Good. still got to go through it. It's not, you know, it's not the same thing if you don't go through it. Thank you. Right, right. Thank you. But now we're talking. But we're talking about you're comparing human beings to a god. Well, we was made in his image. Say again. I said we was made in his image. 
We were made in God's image. That's right. Hmm. It is written. Okay, you know, I just want to let you know we're going to break soon. Okay. Um, but, uh, my friend, thank you for calling in. We really enjoyed your point of view. I think I think you're right though about the God's image because Oops. man is pretty evil, and apparently so is your God. Well, he's got a dark side for sure. <laughs> yeah, he does. Hey, so, hey, what's yeah, your name, Colin? God. What are you going by? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, did you give us your name or? No, I didn't give you my name. Give, it, give us any kind of name. My, my name yeah. is Harold Jackson Bunch. Oh, right Hey, there. Harold Jackson Bunch, hey, call, don't be afraid to call back to speak to Graffo uh, on Thursday nights. Yeah. 10.30. Hey, and and uh, so you're on every Thursday night? That's right. Thursday hey, thank nights. thank you guys for calling. And remember, atheists are good people. Thank you, Harold. All right. Really appreciate it, dude. All right. Praise All right. the Lord. Bye-bye. I don't think he was sincere about praising the Lord. <laughs> he did school me, but you know, I'm kind of doing more than one thing at a time here. We got some Thank goodness I got Joe Bob Grimes in there to jump in, get into a theological argument, and save me from that. I couldn't, I couldn't control odious myself, Odious task. Huh? I couldn't control myself, boss. No, that was fine. That was good. Well, I'm sorry if I, if I went too far. I was about to slip into a real argument with him, but I, you know, I can't do that. So I just want to let you know we've got three calls on hold. Um, Whoa. But we're about to go to our break soon. Do you want to... Now, just push on through the break. If we got three callers, go ahead and put somebody on. Unless you need a break, Trix. Um, well, I hate camera too, by the way. Thank you. Okay. I got a request to draw a pig, something I can handle. Okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to take a break, but I'll leave your audio on the air to yeah. take some calls. Hang on there, callers. Hang in there, rather. Okay. I'm, Hang on. I'm going to put Sue on right now. Sue, are you there? Hold on. Oh. Here she is, Sue. Hey, Sue, what's going on? Hang on, Sue. We're, we're not getting you too well. Trixie, can you hear that? Yeah. Is, uh, Hello? Oh, yeah. no, that's better. Is that better? Yeah, okay. you, were, you were kind of breaking up there. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, yeah, I am a regular watcher of the Atheist Show, but I don't want to talk about religion. Okay, great. Talk about something else. What I want to talk about is your drawing. Oh, I thanks. Your, um... I said thanks. I, just... I, I, I have a question. Are you an animator, or...? No, I'm just a scribbler. I, I, uh, I make and I sell artwork, but I don't work for a company or anything. Well, because I'm an artist as well, and I... I love the way you're just really being very, very, um, oh, I don't know, stingy with the lines, but making them mean something. I really love that. Oh, well, thanks. I do appreciate that. Um, and I wanted to know if you have a regular show. I do. It's on every Thursday night at 1030. 10.30 now. Can you stay up that late? 7.30? No. Nope. No, ju starting July 10th, it's going to start at 10.30 at night. Oh, 10.30? 10 .30. Yeah, 30. I, can, I can handle that. So you stay up late, huh? Well, I can. Well, you should. <laughs> nothing, love to about, have nothing about my beliefs makes me have to go to bed early. <laughs> and so what part of the country are you in? I'm in Austin. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, uh, I regularly watch the atheists. They have a lot of day, but... This is fun. I've had so much fun listening to you guys talk to that other guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I didn't really know what to say to that fellow. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will make a point of watching your show. Um, this you was a pleasant kind of break. I'm glad to be a refreshing kind of break for you. And you said you're an artist as well? Yes. What yes. do you do? Uh, I'm a graphic artist. I design things. Oh, that's anything cool. Anything from a brochure to a menu, whatever. Oh, that's great. Whatever you need. Yeah. 
so that's just what I do. Yeah, I bet you're more successful than I am. No, nah, probably not. No. I work out in my home. <laughs> okay, so do I. But I love it, so. Well, I'll let you go take some other callers. Thank you, Thank Sue. You. I hope to see you here on Thursday nights. I will definitely watch. It's, uh, is that also a call-in show? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Bye-bye. All right, sweetie, bye-bye. I wasn't getting all that. You ready for the next call? Yeah, put them through. Okay, we got yeah. Paul on line two. Yeah, great. Paul, you're on the air. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hey, what's going on, man? How much? How you guys doing? What you say? How are you guys doing? I'm good. Doing great. Doing great. And where are you calling from, man? Uh, Maryland. Wow. I bet it's nice and cool up in Maryland. Uh, cool but humid. Well, yeah, I, I imagine so. You in a swamp or anything? Yeah. What's that? Yeah. So, what's going on up there in Maryland? Oh, uh, just, uh, it's been doing a nice day, funny, but a little humid, but it's nice. Yep, yep, and you thought you were calling the Atheist Show, am I correct? Um, I knew I wasn't calling the Atheist Show, but oh, I am out, one man. of the watchers as well. That's cool. And uh, I appreciate that you guys are welcome to uh, accept an Atheist caller. So I was just kind of interested about what your show's about and uh, what do you guys want to talk about. Have you seen us before? I have not. Oh, okay. Well, we're glad to have you, and especially people that are out of state. We like to uh, get folks from all over to call in. Is uh, let me. And what's your name again? Paul. Paul. Paul, is there something I could draw for you today? Um. Well, I don't know if you do any uh, thing that's like kind of copyrighted or anything, but I am a huge Disney fan, so anything in the Disney realm. Disney. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of getting Disney-esque right now. I don't know if you're seeing me uh, right at this minute. Yeah, yeah, it's a thing. Okay. Uh, you're cool. Trixie? So uh, what kind of topics yes, do you guys usually talk about? Uh, well, generally, we just uh, run the whole gamut. Uh, and to today, uh, we've been uh, taking calls from, well, atheists. But... Uh, we don't necessarily need to talk to atheists at all. <laughs> that first one really <laughs> threw me off my game. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine if you're not used to that. Well, I'm not. It was turning into a theo-religious the, 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 the conversation that I am not prepared or equipped to deal with. Fair enough. Yeah. Right on. So you like Disney, huh? I do. Golly gosh. Okay. Let me see if I can do something kind of Disney here. And this is for Paul. So Paul, tell us a little bit about Maryland. You already said it's swampy and full of mosquitoes. Yeah, so uh, my wife and I moved out here about a year and a half ago from the West Coast. Oh yeah, that's a pretty big change. Yeah, definitely. And I uh, was working for a defense contractor out here. Oh, okay. And you're digging it? Yeah, it's not bad so far. Yeah? I'm, I'm uh, getting geared up to take my first vacation since I've been out here, so I'll be nice. Cool. This is anything but Disney. This is more like, uh, this is more like Tom and Jerry, but I'm trying to draw a pixie. I didn't say Trixie, I said pixie. In case she's paying attention. Oh, pixie's at home. Okay. Have you seen us before? Did I ask you that already? No, yeah, you did, but I have okay. not seen you before. You have not seen us before, okay. Well, you're in good company because I think a lot of other people haven't seen us before. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Are you guys fairly new? Or are you just... Uh, Actually, no, this is a new yeah. time slot for us. Uh, okay. We've been doing this for a few shows, a few dozen shows. Are you guys enjoying working with the uh, public access? Yeah. My wife used to be a part of a public access channel in California. Who is? My wife used to. Oh. What'd she do? 
Uh, she's an artist as well. No kidding. And she, yeah. did, she did art stuff at Public Access? Oh, no. Uh, she participated in just like a local TV show, kind of like a, a variety type show, I guess. We had like special guests on local stuff and a band and uh, little skids and things like that. That's cool. In San Diego, right? Uh, no, it's in the Central Coast area. Well, I was guessing. So, this is a complete mess. I'm about to get rid of it. But it is <laughs> supposed to be Tinkerbell, right? And she always has that dust falling behind her. Okay, cool. Yeah. So. Well, I'll let you guys get on to the other cars and I uh, appreciate the attendance and welcome in for the Okay, Paul, well, thank you very much. Show. Thanks sure. for calling in, man. As yeah, usual, we always take good care of our good drawings right here. Oh, no. <laughs> but I got a line, Trix. All right, you ready for the next one? I guess so. Um, okay, here's a, here's a fan. Welcome, caller. You on the air? Hello, everybody. What's going on, man? Oh, not much. I was going to call in and try to convert all these atheists to Zoroastrianism. Oh, well, by all means, give it a shot. That's a good one. So you Just, know... You know who this is, right? Ahura Mazda. Uh -huh. Ahura Mazda. Zoroaster. Isn't that the first uh, monotheistic god? Um, probably so. Yeah. Do as you know? As, as far as, uh, you know, I think anybody knows. Are you, are you a Zoroastrian type person? No, I was just going to give everybody a hard time. Oh, okay. All right. You're doing a the hell of a job. The music is a little loud this time. Um, yeah. What did he say? The music's loud? Is the music loud, caller? Yeah, it's kind of loud. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm having trouble in here too, Trix. Okay, really? Yeah. Don't you know who that is you're talking to, boss? No. Yeah, I thought you would recognize his voice. I was also going to come. Some, some dude was talking about communism. And uh, he, he was going off on, oh, why... You know, you got yours or whatever. Anyway, communism slash anarchism, there's a difference between personal and private property. You what? can have personal pri property, but private property is different. We, we you know, modern days confuse the two. <laughs> he was really trying to give me a hard time about that. Well, you know. Is this brown bear? No. <laughs> okay. Sometimes I think, I think a lot of people might, I mean, this is going to be controversial, but I think some people might see some, not all, of atheists as being, you know, the ones that put ass in blasphemy. Could you clarify that point for me? I'm just staring know. off into space. I, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> the, the same way that they, uh, some, not, I, I shouldn't say all, but the, that some complain about the fundamentalism and the zealotry of uh, certain believers, they're also displaying the same personality traits. Joe Bob? I, I gotta agree with him there. Okay. Yeah. And it's a personality thing, I think, more than a belief thing. Joe Bob? Well, it seems to me that a lot of these militant atheists were uh, knee deep in, in whatever religion, sometimes right on the way to seminary or. You know, so uh, it's well, like you said, you were you brought up the League of Militant Atheists over in the Soviet Union, right? So uh, that's kind of a given. Given the history of all that, I would be reluctant to call myself a militant atheist, regardless of what faith or you do or do not have. I sure recognize this guy's voice, but I can't place him. Well, he's called in before. Uh -huh. He's one of our. Oh, uh, Dallas. I think that's it. It's Dude. Daedalus. Daedalus. It's the sage Daedalus calling in, everybody. Do we have yeah, a... That, uh, that uh, one dude talking about the blood of God made me uh, think of a drawing idea. Oh, okay. Uh, lay it on me. I'll write it down so I, so I won't forget. Of the Abrahamic uh, covenant. Yeah. God had him take animals and split them in half and then walk between them to seal the covenant. This happened, or you're yeah. coming up with an idea for me to <laughs> no, draw? No, it did. Okay, okay. I thought it would be kind of a cool picture. 
I'm learning all kinds of things today. Yeah, I think it's the fault of the time slot. Yeah. Makes for an interesting experience. I really asked for it today by taking this time slot. Well, now see, I, I, boss, I, I don't mind listening to, to Dadalus talk about uh, God or no God or whatnot. Uh, that other fellow from before, I just didn't think, you know. I, well, he was he was spoiling for an argument. He was looking for trouble. And I'm so detached, I really couldn't give him one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, good thing you don't have your G on your hat. They might think it stands for God. Yeah, where's my G? It's in my grapho bag somewhere. I meant to lay it out, but we're in a different studio to studio today, so I'm a little out of sorts. Oh, I was going to tell that some of these callers to send their drawings in. What a great idea. Uh, Trix, where should callers send their drawings to, anyhow? Um, P.O. Box 6333, zip code 78. Seven six two. You're writing that down for me. Well, I got lost. <laughs> seven, I got six three three. Seven, Say it again. Eight, seven eight seven six two. Should I put that up on the uh, board here? Yeah, it'd be easier than for than me trying to remember what you just said. I did learn that Buzz Lightyear was the first guy on the moon. Yeah, and, and so is uh, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong yeah. and Buzz Lightyear. The music was great. And I think uh, Phil Collins was the one in the module still. Yeah. That flew around. Uh, brother of Mike. Right. Yeah. Brother of Mike Collins and, yeah. um, you know, learning all kinds of good things today. I think Gary Busey was Mission Control. Boy, that, they'd be in a lot of trouble if that were the case, huh? <laughs> They had never gotten that spaceship back down. Dallas, uh, what is it you said you thought was a good idea for me to draw today? Oh, uh, Abraham walking in between a bunch of cleaved and half animals. Okay, all right. I so put like a, a cow and a, a goat or a pigeon or something. Sure, sure, cows. I'll take that under advisement. <laughs> Let me, okay, I'll do it, I'll do it uh, simply. Real easy satisfy the requirements here. And this plays into why Christians believe that the blood is important because it goes back to these ancient days of rituals being sealed by walking in between the blood of sacrificed animals. And that it's kind of a continuation of all of that. Man, where do you guys learn all this stuff? Seth? Um, do don't say Sunday school, because I won't believe you. No. <laughs> no. Just watching Seinfeld. This uh, animal smiling, but we'll just deal with it. And Abraham, huh? Yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. I think you should have bowling shoes on. Okay. He's not walking, though. <laughs> I've kind of drawn myself into a corner here, but no problem. Well, you know, extemporaneous challenge drawing. Exactly. On television. On television. Yeah. With militant atheists. That's right. Calling it's, in. it's not nerve wracking. So the, so uh, Dadalus. What's up? So the, uh, but basically what you're saying is the, the sacrifice, uh, the tradition of sacrifice goes back a ways. Yeah. Yeah, it was actually like a old Near Eastern thing, like, you know, say somebody got married and they promised, you know, this or that, and like to seal the deal, they would do this way, would split the animals in half and walk between the blood and get the blood on their feet and the edge of their tunics or whatever. People and don't do blood sacrifices no more, right? No, well, uh, I don't know. Santeria? Uh, oh, uh, excuse <laughs> me. I bet, there's, I bet there's some happening. Well, I know Santeria. Yeah. Yeah. You know, with some chickens. You right. know, I went out to uh, the uh, cemetery here in Austin, and there was some stuff like that laying out. It, I don't know. Yeah, like a uh, glass like of wine, beads, bread. Gave me the creeps. The very, hey, very Bravo. New Orleans. Gave me the Willie Nelsons. What, Trix? Trixie here. Um, we got a couple more calls. Give me a... Um, 
Dadalus, you're getting you know. bumped. I just yeah, wanted to let ahead. you know. All right, brother. Thanks for calling in. All right. See y'all later. Yeah, later on. He's a good caller. Yeah, Call. he's yeah, great. He's great. Whoa. 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 <laughs> Don't know what that was. Hold on. Okay, the next caller is Trevor on line one. Welcome, Trevor. You're on the air. Hi, how you doing? What's going on, Trevor? Hey, uh, I'm not sure what the topic is for today. I kind of tuned in late. It's anything you want to talk about, man. Oh, okay. Well, I was wondering, because I've been watching your show for about a year now, and I was wondering if atheists have any sort of uh, recovery program, because I was going to Alcoholics Anonymous for a while, and it... And it Damn near made me drink myself to death just going. <laughs> well, uh, recovery. You paint a picture of like Bill Wilson getting cracked over the head by a bottle of Jack Daniels by Jesus. Uh, yeah, that's a lot going on there. Could you back up a little bit? No, that's fine. <laughs> so if you need recovery, why don't you go to church? <laughs> I mean, because they serve wine there, and I'm a recovering alcoholic. Oh, go to Methodist Church. It's grape juice. Oh jeez. Yeah. Oh jeez. <laughs> no, I need really I need real help. I don't need, you know, because the whole program of AA is is based on a relationship with something that doesn't exist. And it tells you that you have to have a relationship with this higher power that doesn't exist otherwise you're going to die. I don't think the doesn't exist part is in there. I know it isn't. Oh, okay, I got you. I found out through my own personal experience that there is no God that exists that can help me out. And so what I was wondering is if um, uh, atheists have any kind of recovery program. Do you want me to take this one, Grafo? Yeah. Yeah, so the AA is really popular, but I hear there was a court case about that or something, and that there's another program out there that's not a higher power-based program, okay. but I don't know what it's called. Oh. Well. And we. But, um, but, but, but they do exist. Yeah, they exist now. Because that, that would be refreshing to talk about... Uh, because the whole AA program is, is designed to make you feel powerless and, and then tells you you're insane and that your only hope of uh, living is to turn your will and your life over to the care of something that doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, yeah, you have to believe in a higher power and that could, they tell well, they're you. they're really specific they tell in you. AA. They, they don't say, I mean, they mention higher power, uh, but, but there are quotes in the big book that say you need to find God or else. Oh, really? I didn't know oh, they used oh, yeah. the word oh, God in there. I went, to, well, I went to AA for years. And I... I, I okay. it, it, uh, I'm getting it, thirsty right now. I don't blame you. <laughs> I'm not making light of, of your situation, though. Hey, boss, can I jump in here for a Yeah, second? please do. Uh, caller, uh, what's your name? What are you going by? Trevor. Trevor. Trevor? Uh, so, you know, Trevor, I, I used to work uh, at a place in Galveston, Texas. Okay. And uh, I, so I would go out. Uh, I had to take a bunch of people to the uh, Galveston AA meetings out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, from from what I hear, that's kind of a legendary group. Uh, there's a lot of characters in there. But uh, I, now I remember for sure that there were uh, a handful of atheists out there. And they, it was, I, I thought that the, uh, my understanding of the higher power was that it could be, it didn't need to be a supernatural God at all. It could be your... I, I thought for some people, the group yeah. itself is their higher power. Well, that's fine. That, that's all well and good. Um, however, the book that AA goes by specifically says that you need to find God or else. So you can call it whatever you want. You can, you can call it higher, higher power or whatever you want, but... It, but you're going to have a real hard time if um, with these big book thumpers that, that, that tell you you have to have God in your life. Yeah. And so, that's why I had a hard time not only um, with, with the drinking part. I mean, I'm, I'm not drinking now because I got away from that. You know, I talk to normal people and we talk about... Uh, 
dealing with, you know, plus I'm bipolar. I think a lot of people in AA are bipolar or have other mental illnesses, and they're told, well, if you believe in God, everything will be okay, and it's not okay, and we end up either drinking ourselves to death or, or killing ourselves. Okay, so the, the big book says that if you believe in God, then everything will be okay. Absolutely. I thought you had to follow the steps. Well, the steps, to, the, the steps in the big book, it says the main purpose of this book is for you to get a relationship with a, a power greater than yourself, which will solve your problem. And the problem is an alcoholism. The problem is you're a sinner. Is that what the AA says? Exactly, because part uh, step six is uh, we were entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character, which is the same thing as saying remove these sins. I'm, I'm entirely ill-equipped to handle this okay. type of conversation. Okay. But I do sympathize with your plight. Well, I'm okay now because I discovered... Uh, uh, Sounds like you relied that, on, you know, on some kind of inner strength to get through your situation. And, and we, should, um, we should also remind the caller to call back next week when the atheist experience is back on and maybe they could help him out more. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't sure, caller, if you knew. We took the, uh, we took the time slot, but we're actually not the atheist experience. Oh, my well, great grief. Yeah, so That's okay. I want to encourage you to call back next week, um, and then our show, um, our show, Speak to Grapho, will be on starting July 10th at 10.30. I see. So, uh, so it's 4.30 Central for the atheist experience next week? That's right. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I apologize. Oh, well, don't apologize. Yeah. We don't no. accept your apology. Good, because I, I didn't think I was, I thought I was talking to someone else. So it's perfectly fine if you don't accept my apology. <laughs> Not a problem, man. Not a problem at all. All right. Have a nice night. All right. See you later. Thanks. Bye. Yep. How are we doing out there, Trex? Okay. We got a caller on line four. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hey, caller. Hold on. Okay, caller. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Yeah, actually, if you can draw a depiction of a revolver, if I give it to you. Could you, could you enunciate a little bit better? Yeah, I'll pick you up. I was curious to draw or like your uh, if I give it to you. He's, you're breaking up a little bit, caller. Um, Grafo, he wants you to draw. Yeah, okay, all right, lay it on me, man. He wants you to draw a particular Bible verse. So, okay, caller. Yeah, I'm getting some feedback in my phone. Can you I turn down your be, TV? Uh, um, no, I'm I'm away from my TV. Let's just power okay, through this. You sound good on the air. So, what's you your? Okay, I'm good. Ezekiel twenty three twenty. Okay. What's it say? Uh, look it up. Oh, oh we, we got to look it up. <laughs> I, I can't remember that. I, I don't know that verse. I'll, oh, I'll look it up. On. Yeah, yeah. All right, give us a minute. We're going to look it okay. up right now. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, I, um, um, I will take your drawing offline. All right, brother. Thanks for calling. Well, wait, Thank you. What is it? What is the verse? He didn't want to tell us what it was? No. No, no. It's, it's, it's like in your book. You'll see it. Yeah. Well, we don't have a book. In Why not? Of us. What book? The oh, the Bible. We don't have a Bible. <laughs> oh. We, we got the internet. It? Joe, Bob, get on your phone. Can you read it to us? Um, I don't have a Bible in front of me. I'm an atheist. But well, do you know what the verse is, what it says? Oh, okay, hold on. Let's Go to a hotel room, yeah, get you, a Bible. Can you look it I'll up Google for it. us? Hold on. Yeah. 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 Or the Bhagavad Gita, whatever they have laying around A there. random Bible verse, it sounds like. And he doesn't... No. Okay, got it. Here, here it is. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, go ahead. We're waiting on you. She lusted after lovers with gentles as large as donkeys and emissions like those as a horse. All yeah. right. You got your work cut out for you, boss. Yeah, I do. I didn't catch all that. But Thank you, caller. We're going to work on that. All right, sounds good. Thank all you. All right, brother. Peace out. Cheers. Yep. I don't want to draw that. I didn't hear yeah. it, so you... For one thing, it's, it's way only, too complicated. It's only a suggestion. Yeah, I know. Um, so, I'm just drawing a book right now until I get something good. Somebody's texting the heck out of me right now. I hope it's not you guys. Do you need me to come check it? No. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should draw um, a suggestion to support Okay, we'll do them both. 
Oh, you and me? Easily done. I can do it myself very easily. Let me start on myself first. Okay. It's real easy. I got a round okay. head, so I do that. And my brother thinks I look like Babe Ruth, but I don't think I look like him. No, no. I think in that when I played baseball, I hit two home runs in a 10-year span. So, well, it was Little League. So uh, how far, those, those fields look really small when you see them these days. They're, back then, though, that, that fence was way out there. I thought I had a career in baseball. Hello. So, uh, I'm up here low eyebrow. Access. Facial hair really helps. Sure. See, nothing to it. And usually, I got a lot of hair, but I've been cutting it short, so that and I'm balding. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. That's me smiling, by the way. And that's Grapho. All right. Of course, I look younger there. But all right, so you and me. My crew just disappeared. Are y'all still here? Yeah, we're here. Okay. You don't have any more people on the phone no. trying to trip me up? There's no blinking red lights right now. Far out. So I guess you can uh, relax now or <laughs> yeah. chill out a little bit or. Do your own thing. Did we turn off the atheists? Uh, drive them into church? I don't know. Maybe, uh, well, usually usually their show is for an hour, and we're an hour and a half. So we, we still have a half hour, and maybe they won't call in anymore. Wow. Seems like the show's been going on for several hours to me, well, Trix. Well, just one. And, okay. But we'll probably have a break coming up in five minutes, just so you know. Great. An intermission? An intermission. All right. Now, if I don't like this drawing, I'm talking to an audience member. If I don't like this drawing, I'm not going to show it to you. Except it may be on TV. I don't know. Hey, boss. Yeah. You know, I, I think the problem with the uh, atheist bunch is they're, they're, what they're used to doing is they call up on the show and they kind of just all pat each other on the back. I see. So I don't think they're ready to run into a little trouble like that. Right. I'd be happy to pat them on the back. I, I have really... I don't have a great deal of interest in the topic, but, okay, well, I'm, you know. What? what? I, I thought you wanted atheists to call in. I do want atheists to call in. Okay. But we're kind of like a drawing show. <laughs> <laughs> I love atheists. You gotta add Tom in the picture, too. Huh? You gotta add Tom. Tom in the picture. Where are you from, anyhow? They can talk into okay. the mic. Oh, that's okay. okay. We have a we have an audience member. She's from Peru. Uh, you're from uh, Lima. No. Close. That's the only city I know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Is that on? Yeah. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Okay. Perfect. So you're from Sorry. Lima, Peru. No, you're not from Lima. I am from Trujillo. Trujillo. That's that place by Lima. Right by Lima. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's on the coast. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, beautiful, uh, beautiful place, huh? Yes. Yeah? It's amazing. Beautiful beaches, beautiful people, Is that really right? good food. Peru's got a coast? Uh huh. Yeah, I guess oh, it does. Oh, no. Well, I, I get it mixed up with Ecuador. Oh, which is landlocked. Right next door. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the president down there is Evo Morales? No, well, uh, we had a Japanese president for 15 years. Right, Fui so now Mori. we're upgrading. Two. We, uh, we, we have this new president, Toledo. What's his name? Uh, Toledo. Okay. I'm not even going to try that. Don't try it. Yeah, yeah. Don't try that. I'm not <laughs> even sure he's our president. Yeah. <laughs> 
she did while I you did, while actually. you were doing God knows what. I wanted to uh, draw him with Grafo. Oh, okay. And you. So this is a new you thing get for us really having, jealous uh, if I didn't add you. <laughs> having people in the audience uh, talking. Yeah, how do you feel about it so far, Grafo? Well, I don't know. We'll have a staff meeting and we can all yell at each other about it later. I have a request. Lay it on me, sir. Um, Joe Bob, I heard that you had a traumatic experience on an airplane leaving Mexico. Joe Bob, is this true? Leaving Mexico? Yes. Uh, leaving Mexico. I, I had a, no, I, I don't know about leaving Mexico. Well, maybe going into Mexico? Or, it sounded really fun. This is television, I, Joe Bob. Lay it on us, man. What I happened? Maybe Grafo could draw it. Uh, depiction of the experience. If well, I, if my recollections. Do I need more than a black? Well, I, I kind of, I kind of lost my lunch uh, on a plane to Greece. Oh, okay. It was Greece. I got an orange crayon here. It's a brilliant story, Joe Bob. Well, well that's the story. Okay. Well. You're gonna be mad at me, sweetie. I don't, but. Who's who? Me or? It's Liz, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, I gave you almond-shaped eyes. Okay, just so you know, we're in our second break. Yeah, yeah Fui Mori. Is it intermission time? It's intermission. Your mics are still on, but this is your chance to stand up. And then this, so we have a minute of clouds right now, and then after a minute, we're going to have a special, um, a special clip I'm going to play. Cool. Yeah. We can't talk about where those were filmed. What's that? Okay, I'm still laboring on this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it would give me an excuse as to why could get into farming, ranching. Hey, Grafo. Yes. I just wanted to let you know that <laughs> I wanted to let you know that song was performed by a non one and and he did that uh, especially for you. Oh, he's great. We'll have to Of course, we don't know his name, do we? Now he goes by anonymous number 1. Thanks anonymous number 1. I assume we're not on uh, break anymore, huh? Nope, break's over. Okay. Yeah, what, okay, what part of the it... solar system am, am I in? I'm... No, no, that's, that's definitely the God realm, man. 
Okay, is it loud out there? Is it too loud? How's, is the music too loud out there? We can't hear a darn thing. Oh, uh, okay. All right, oh, we're getting more calls. Hey, can you hold? Okay, you ready for a call, Grapho? Yeah, I'll put them through. Why not? Where's the John Deere? <laughs> Get uh, welcome, there. caller. You on the air? Let me write that down. Check. Oh, sorry, you're not on the air. Can I get your first name and uh, Caller, are you there? Check. Check. Check one, two. There we oh, go. Hold on a second. I don't know if that's a caller. That's, or... your, that's your caller, boss. Hey, caller, what's going on, man? How you doing, sir? Uh, I really enjoy your styling. You've made a definite stand. I was wondering, uh, when is your show on normal Thursdays at 10 or 10.30? 10.30, Thursday night. 10.30, I will change my alarm. You oh, keep man, up that's the great. Screen. Definitely tune in. Give us a screen. It's starting July 10th. Oh. You guys keep up the good work. Take care. Thank you now. Appreciate it. Was that a plan? Was that a real phone call? Was that Joe Bob? Uh, that was not me. Okay. Okay, you ready for the next one? Yeah, put We got Rob there. on line four. Yeah. Rob, you're on the air. Hey, guys. I'm going. What's going on, man? Yeah, I'm much. Just uh, watch the show, and uh, I think I got an idea to com combine uh, both topics. Yeah, we, ha we have a one for atheist and religion. We definitely have a combination of something going on today. Is there uh, anything I can draw for you today? Or do you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, some kind of, you know, some kind of uh, holy brisket. Like, uh, you know how everybody looks up to the cross and they revere it and they're all, all struck and humble by it? Just kind of put it up there on a the hill, it's a foot on top of a mountain, but it's a brisket. Something that can bring everybody together. Dude, you should everybody have your own show. Them. I'm not sure what you're talking about. But I think I got him. I got oh. him, boss. Oh, okay. Well, step on in here, Joe Bob. I'll get on this John Deere tractor I'm about to draw. Well, he first of all, he's talking about brisket, and I know you know what that is. I do. Okay. Well, he's yeah. saying, can you have a situation where people are, and I wouldn't normally go for this on anything else, you know, no gods before me, but on brisket, just for a drawing, I understand what he's saying. He's saying people worship in brisket. Yeah, yeah you know, like the... Uh, like the Ark of the Covenant or something like that, when they're all carrying it up the mountain. Joe Bob? Carrying it up the mountain. So uh, he's saying like a golden calf kind of deal. Yeah, or a bronze bull. Or a or a bron cow. Yeah, yeah. And it, and, it, and it comes from a cow, too. So it, it, There you go. I think that's where the Bible got it wrong. I think uh, they just stored that, just stored that golden calf. But let me tell you about that golden brisket they got. He's on to something. No, I, uh, go away. No, he's making a good point, but to me, where I'm sitting, where the speakers are, it's a little unintelligible. Oh. Yeah. Now, see, I understood that, what you just said. How about now? That sound good. So, so okay. tell us again, caller. Uh, a gold brisket. A gold brisket up on the mountain, right? That's right. Okay. Keep Everybody in river. It's kind of like, you know, instead of like the man out of came from heaven, just brisket instead. I like my brisket to look like a brisket instead of being coated in gold. Well, you ain't cooking my brisket. But what, but what if you wanted something to, what if you had a really great brisket, boss, and you wanted there something to remember it by? No. That would be fun, too. I would have greasy clothes that I'd wipe it on. My my my, my had a bronze cow that he turned into a smoker, and uh, he used to make we used to call it the golden brisket. Far out, man. That's what I say to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, caller, have you ever driven a tractor before? Man. But I don't think that I ever really had. Well, uh, I think I did it one time and I made a complete mess of it. Almost killed myself. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. I think I got all in and started it. And then, like, 
couldn't figure out how to turn it back off, but I just let the room. Oh, wow, that's probably the right thing to do, though. You know? No, we were like, I was like five or six, and it was like a big giant tractor that was doing road work on. Well, my problem was I hopped on a tractor and I started switching gears, but apparently you don't switch gears on this particular kind of tractor. Right. I mean, not like a stick shift. Oh, you got on one of those non-switching gear tractors, yeah. I guess. Yeah. It popped a wheelie. I thought it was my last day on earth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. They can be real intimidating. I went through not a couple fences, a, a ditch. Mm -hmm. Everything else. How about a tractor pulling a brisket? A tractor pulling a brisket? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. I've only got so much paper, man. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put the brisket. But I think I'm making a mess of this John Deere tractor. Well, yeah, I'd like to make a mess of some brisket right now. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Joe Bob? Yeah. What's up, boss? Are you taking all that in? Yeah, I'm listening. No, I don't know if you are. Well, he got, now you got me thinking about brisket, and we, you know, we're just... I know. We go right down the street here, and we see Franklin's, right? We're on the same street. Yeah, well, I was gonna, I was going to call him and mention the brisket before you were missing, but I knew you got to you know, show it. We ought to get Franklin's to sponsor the show and bring us some brisket down oh, here. Oh, they sell out real quick, man. Now you're talking. Yeah. So is the fellow on the traffic going to have a golden brisket on the hood of the... Yeah, like a, bris a golden brisket tractor and hood on it. How, how, how wrong am I there, Vector? No, forget about the brisket. Let's go back to the tractor. How bad is that? It looks good. Can y'all see from that angle? It's looking good. He's got a big green on his face, so it's just half of it. You have to put that in enough. Right, right, right. Or maybe he's on his way to get some brisket. That's, yeah. That's what he's doing. He's driving to town for some brisket. Mm-hmm. Something to think that I think that's what I'm about to do, actually. I need to get some brisket right now. Yeah. Amen. Run it by the station. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if that's that, uh, you know, my brisket. Uh, now, boss, that's getting me thinking about what you were talking about earlier about uh, what's mine is mine. You know, I that's think right. that I think I just said that, but go ahead. Well, I'm just, I, you know, I, I relate to that a little bit, but on brisket, yeah. Yeah. What's oh. mine is mine. Oh no. Right, God. right, right. But then you you let the whole world see the whole effort smelling your brisket while you're cooking it, and then you're not going to carry it. I mean, you know, you make, you make some very good points there. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like we got a restaurant right around the Yankees, or I'll be Caller, uh, it yeah. sounds like you're coming in and out, like your uh, phone is going up to your face and then back away again or something. Well, maybe. Well, see, now that's, <laughs> now that's more consistent. <laughs> maybe. Are you riding a horse or something? <laughs> no, I'm considered I'm ganking up wood for smokers trying to iron the best I'm not. I <laughs> All I heard was that he was smoking. Well, listen, uh, it's been great talking to you. Call back anytime. Remember, we're on Thursdays at 10:30, and we'd love to have you. Brisket, brisket, my brother. Brisket, amen. Amen. Later. He's on a ranch. He's got the sun beating down on him over here. Uh, there's some feral hogs. They just ran through the picture. They're off over here someplace. Trex, you got any other people? No blinking red lights. Okay, because we had some, at least I had real trouble understanding what the gentleman was saying. Oh. I don't know about anybody else. Hello, Connor. Would you like to see the girl? That's when I say Joe Bob. That means take over. You Joe ready Bob. for another call, Grafo? Sure, why not? Welcome, caller. You're on the air. 
Hey, I'll be going. What's going on, man? Not too much. We oh, just, uh, turn down your TV on. caller. Victor, you're going to hate this, but that's it. Yeah. The caller needs to turn down his TV and talk. Hey. Okay, hello? Hey, what's going on, man? Oh, not too much today. You can draw another picture? Yeah. I'm just thinking about drawing. Well, uh, I was going to get some input from you. Hmm. What can I draw for you today? Well, I'm having a hard time. A lot of people try to stump me. And a lot of people are successful at that. How can you stump me today? Hmm. Okay. Hmm. All right. So, uh. How about you draw a picture of a tree stump? Okay. Really good suggestion. Simple. Okay, and then put a target. I, I love it. So we'll, we'll start with that. Where are you calling from, Austin? Yes, sir. Okay. Because we've had a call from Maryland and Louisiana today. Okay, there's the grass by the tree stump. Yep, got your grass. Okay, now we should put a... Uh, this kind of like Bob Ross is about all the colors in the pretty little tree. Could you say that again? Because this is kind of like Bob Ross but without the pretty little tree. Exactly. Exactly. So you can be any kind of stump you want. Where does this stump live? That's what Bob Ross would say. Hmm. We need a. Um... I'm wondering if anybody here knows who Bob Ross is. Everybody know who Bob Ross? Okay. He's the painter on TV with the poofy hair. Yeah. He's gone now. Yeah, I think he died in the uh, 80s. Yeah, he died a while back, but you can still buy his art supplies at the store with his picture on them. They're the, they're the expensive ones. I'm trying to get a uh, original of his painting to put their heart and phone. What'd you say? So, okay, I got my stump. How okay. can we expand on this concept? Hmm. Maybe we should have a little troll uh, staining on the trunk. I will put a troll. Have him stain it up on the trunk. Yep. With some stump. Yep. Start with the shoes. Got the troll shoes. Of course, I never draw something from the shoes up, but I'm doing it now. Okay. For you. Okay. He's in shorts. He may turn into a gnome before our very eyes. Yeah, he's already looking a little more civilized than the typical troll. Yeah, he's looking like a, 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 a gnome. Are trolls bad people? No, they're just rustic. They don't wear a lot of fancy clothes. Yeah. He... These are fancy shoes, aren't they? You know, this may be Pinocchio. We're kind of going full circle that whole Disney thing now. You could, could put some uh, balls on those. What'd you say? Some little balls on the shoes. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, you know, circus, the little balls in the shoes. Oh, okay, I got you. But like this? Let me see here. I think Somehow your, this you, picture isn't jiving with The going as fast as, uh, as the thumb. Joe Bob? Yes, boss. Interpret? Is there a delay on it? On the phone? I, yeah. I hear you on the, t on the phone, but yep. turn on the TV, it's going slow. Turn down, turn down your yeah, TV that's so you what's can't hear messing it. messing us up there. No, the TV's turned down. It, it oh. Just, uh, oh, yeah. The there's... way he's drawing the picture, you can tell. There's a delay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is this a gnome or just a, a child wearing <laughs> shoes like that? We need a gnome. Oh, all right. What? Uh, gnome or, or troll? Troll. Troll. All right, what's a troll look like? Let's start with the basics. Big and ugly. Oh, okay. Big, ugly, big nose. Perfect. So, some some big, nasty feet. All right. Hang on, Joe big Bob. Big, nasty feet. Oh, new one. Oh, so they look like those little troll dolls? 
That right there looks like a big, uh, big old Howard Stern Juno. Joe Bob? Do you know Alaska? Well, I heard Juno. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Juno. I'm sure he's talking about Juno, Alaska. There you go. That's looking good. Give him a nice that looks like Popeye. Popeye. A little bit. Give him a nice little runny mustache there. Did you say mustache? Big old ears. Big old ears. He needs some big old monkey teeth like Baba Booey. Teeth? Well, I've kind of run out of room to put the teeth in. Yeah, some big monkey teeth right there. Joe Bob says they have, you know, with this hairdo, I could turn him into Hitler pretty easily. No, no, just put some monkey teeth on. Okay. Oh no, that is Hitler. That's gonna be Juno's uh, monkey teeth uh, Hitler. I don't know about all that. Put the teeth on. Trixie, what are you doing in there, sweetie? I'm pushing buttons. Okay. Caller, what, did you have something you wanted to say? Are you going to draw the teeth? <laughs> he wants you to draw those monkey teeth. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, let's, <laughs> let's squeeze those in here. That's where his lip is, so we'll just... Is that better? Yeah, get those big old monkey teeth in there. Those look like movie star teeth, boss. They do. Put, they put do. a little hair on them. Put some fuzzy, stinky, smelly monkey teeth. <laughs> Have big, big little fly planter on there. Joe Bob, you're getting that right. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, just so you know, we got about four or five minutes left. Not coming a minute too soon. Dude, that was he's strong. He's strong. He's. I kind of had to compress the body because the head was too big. And here we are. And then I satisfied your teeth requirements. He's, he's strong. And that's how we got in this awful, awful situation. Okay, caller. Thanks for calling. We really All right, appreciate uh, calling, Baba man. Booey, Baba Booey, Howard Spoon's penis. Have a good day. All right. <clears throat> Oh, some people say anything. What they? I, I didn't quite catch that. I but. caught a little bit of it. Hey, I, I had a thought, boss. Lay it on me, by all means. Well, I think that uh, putting up the beauty of God's creation behind you has kind of intimidated some of the atheist callers. I think so, too. What that, do we do about it? We're going to have something different next time. Yeah, put up a, a you know, like a picture of a, a, a test tube or a Petri dish or something. I think that's what they're into. Okay. All right. We got one of those, Trixie? Uh, we can look for one. Yeah, we could find that easily enough. I don't know what point you're trying to make, but, you know, cool, man. Oh, you want me to do a booty? Perfect. Perfect. I can do that. Can you do that? In Four some odd minutes? Yeah, I'll try to do that in four well, some odd minutes. Well, about two minutes. Okay. Two minutes, it two sounds minutes. like. The Buddha pretty much is me without my shirt on. I'll tell you that right now. Why are they always so happy? Because he found enlightenment? I don't know. Hey, would you like a man, know? right? It's not some kind of dude from outer space. No, he's okay. from India. Okay, guys, no. we got a caller. Hey, caller. Hey, welcome, caller. You're on the air. Um, hey, how, hey, how's it going? And he All asked right. about our website. You can go to speaktographo.com, and it has our schedule and the links. Yeah, you got the website there? Yeah, maybe I should put it up on the screen That's a here. great idea, Trex. And uh, can you watch all the shows there? Yeah. Maybe I should um, turn down your TV. Okay. Can you watch all the shows there? 
So you can watch the television shows on the website. You can there there will there's links that you can click that will take you to the live stream. But you get the recorded. You can get them recorded part right. Oh, you want the recorded ones? Yeah. They're I don't like, think uh, our assistant has posted those on YouTube yet, but she will soon. They will. Yeah, be up. so it'll be up on the YouTube here pretty soon. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, Turn down great. your TV, caller. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? I sure can. Okay, that's better. Did you have something you want Grafo to draw? To try or, to draw. Or something you want to talk about? You should have a uh, big old draw. It is striking down. You know. What did he say? Striking down on the devil. The devil? You want the devil drawn? He wants somebody who's going to be striking down the devil. Oh, well, I'm doing that now. Strike on down. Strike him down. On the devil. Are you, uh, do you normally watch the atheist show, sir? No, sir. I'm first oh. time. Oh, okay, cool. First time, Paul. Oh, great. So we had some atheists calling in earlier. We need to get more coming in. All right, we we need to wrap it up, Grafo. All right, caller, thank you very much. All right, much. Baba Baba Booey, how are those people? All right, peace out. Baba Booey, how are those people? Yeah. Well, well tricks. We don't have much time left, do we? I think you need to sign us out. Thanks, Austin. Thank you, audience. Really appreciate. It. Had a good time. Adios. Kill it, Tricks.